I uh, want to welcome everyone to our board meeting today. Is that bat feeding on you? Or is it my hearing? You're good. <clears throat> I was getting an echo, and I'm wondering if it was everyone else was getting what I was getting. I have these really nice hearing devices, and they, they help, but sometimes I can pick up the darndest things <laughs> on them. Um, again, I want to welcome you. Uh, before we get go going, um, also, well, I want to welcome uh, our, on our Utah Highway Patrol, we have uh, Jim Miller and Chris Horrock. Thank you. Um, we have help, helping us today. Um, in the case of emergencies, we have these exits. We leave these doors, you get in the hallway, and you can go north or south. There's signs there and an exit, exit the building. There's also uh, restroom accommodations are just right out these doors right here in the in the hallway. That, that covers that part of it. Um, so we'll get this meeting started. We'll get right to our agenda uh, in our opening business uh, section here. The, the first um, item up is, is the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. And I, I've been so excited to get together, I didn't make an, make an uh, uh, assignment. And so I know it's easy to do, but I'm going to ask uh, Member Booth because he gave me the eye like, I am good. So sorry. <laughs> That's great. So if you'd lead us in the pledge. Please join me. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Good way to start our day. Um, next, we'll have uh, member Matt Hymas. You're doing our board member message. Is that correct? Time's yours. Yes. Thank you. It's uh, and I apologize. It's less of a message, more of a recognition. But it was um, it was my pleasure to have helped stuff and prepare backpacks for children across the state and at an event hosted by the organization Education Opportunity for Every Child. Um, I, uh, along with several others, received an invitation from Executive Director Allison Sorensen, and I was greatly blessed for accepting that invitation. Not only did we have people volunteering on site, but many others willing, willingly donated supplies to help those in need. And so I'd, I'd like to publicly thank Education Opportunity for Every Child for their efforts to give confidence and much needed supplies to over a thousand of our children here in Utah. Um, as, as classrooms, ad additionally, as classrooms have opened up throughout the state with a few more opening shortly, I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity to express gratitude for our wonderful teachers throughout the state. As a board, we recognize the energy that goes into teaching children of all ages. We see the time that teachers spend that goes well beyond the classroom hours. We see the stacks of papers that are taken home to be graded over the weekends. And we know that teaching is not an easy career path, yet your love, passion, and kind-heartedness have brought you to the classroom where you willingly share your knowledge and passion with your students. We thank you for your work uh, that you do on the front lines for answering difficult questions, for not only working to teach children academics, but teach them how to be productive citizens that strengthen our communities, all the while working in tandem with parents, dozens of parents and families that desire various outcomes. So teachers, again, thank you. You are amazing. We acknowledge your efforts and we value what you are doing for our communities all across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Member Hymas. Um, next, we will have employee recognition, Superintendent Dixon. All right, come on up. <laughs> Good morning, board members uh, and members of the public. I am so pleased to introduce our Employee of the Month. And I told Tondalea I was really going to embarrass her. So um, this is kind of a fun moment to be able to do that. 
Uh, Tonda Leastit has been in our agency for a number of years, and so she's one of our historians, and that's a really important role because she she knows how to answer questions to the public. She's super helpful. Um, right now, she is serving in uh, currently serving in the prevention section, but she was with adult ed, and um, when she moved positions, that position was not filled yet, and she just stepped in, volunteered to help with a huge lift of uh, needing to match some names that came in. And that's why she was nominated. But I will tell you this, that when it was announced to her section in a staff meeting that she was employee of the month, she, had a, she got, received a two-minute standing ovation. That is how Tondalea is loved. So I want to tell you a little bit about how she also, outside of her uh, position that she feels, how she, she provides support to the greater good. Tondalea has long been a member of our Employee Action Committee. And the Employee Action Committee, um, they have the awesome responsibility of trying to help with morale and culture in the building. And so they provide activities throughout the year. And Tondalea, she takes her work very seriously. She's super focused on making sure that every student and family has the kind of support that they need. And she's fierce about it. But when it comes to parties, she is the funometer. She puts the fun in it. She's the one that plans the activities and the games, and she's very aware of what is needed in our agency to keep um, morale up and just kind of build co collaboration. And she is a volunteer on the Employee Action Committee and has always been so willing to do that. So we are so thrilled to be able to honor Tondalee and to embarrass her. She just hates the limelight. So that's, that's part of the fun. So you know the drill, she gets um, eight hours of uh, admin time, a parking place that you know you all know, you don't park in the employee of the month parking place, and um, a certificate and a, a water bottle. So Tondalea, congratulations, we're really proud of you and so appreciate the great contribution that you make to this, to this agency. So congratulations. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, next, we'll have our famous fine arts edu uh, yeah, education specialist, um, Kathy Jensen, come up and tell us about this artwork. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about these wonderful quilts that were created in Cache County School District at Lewiston School under the direction of their Beverly Taylor Sorensen teacher, Mandy Sig. So each one is unique. Each one relates to a grade level of uh, core content. On the east wall on the very south, with kind of the, um, the yellow border, you see individually created blocks that were made by the hands of first graders. They were learning about cacti and its adaptations that help it live in the desert. They use fabric markers to create this work of art. Our second graders, uh, with the polka dots around it, these second graders were learning about animal habitats and what they need to survive. They created these abstracted animals by using a fabric dyeing technique called batik. They used glue and fabric dyes. Aren't they amazing for second graders? And then next to that, on the west wall, third graders learned about Earth's beautiful fossils. In this quilt, the students studied fossils found in our great state of Utah. They did an acrylic painting showing all the tiny details of the fossil. Then, this piece with the, with the white borders uh, created by third graders. Mandy Zig taught her students about the effects of the sun on our planet, including how it affects people, plants, and animals. Kyanotype is a solution or emulsion of iron compounds that react to ultraviolet light. They coated the fabric with kyanotype solution. Students used found objects as their negative exposing the fabric to either sunlight or a photographic light box. 
By using this process, students were able to see the effects of the sun's ultraviolet rays in real time while creating beautiful compositions with varied found objects. You can see leaves, you can see scissors, and other things that the students uh, used as negatives. And the fifth grade students, the middle on the east, they were learning about chemical change. This is an ancient art process of shibori dyeing, and it allowed them to see that chemical change. As the green dye oxidized, it changed to a brilliant blue. Each square is unique because of the way that it was folded. So we congratulate Mandy Zig and her students at Lewiston School in the Cache County School District. We also thank the collaborative effort of the community members who helped with the piecing, the stitching, and the quilting. Thank you, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just curious, um, maybe by a raise of hands, how many, maybe, and everyone, board members, certain, I'm talking to the board members, but everyone can certainly participate in How many of you have, have helped or been a part of quilting? I mean, I, yeah, part of quilting. <laughs> who, maybe I should say who hasn't, and we'll put that invitation <laughs> out there. It is, it is a lot of work, but when it is done, it is, it is special. And it, it def, definitely is art. So, and if you want to get started in it, my favorite is those, is it the rag quilt where you cut the ends and tie the knot and wash and wash and, yeah. That's, that, that's about, I'm good at cutting and tying the knot. But when I'm asked by the right people. So, <laughs> um, but these are certainly beautiful. Thank, thank you for bringing this art to us. Uh, education highlight, um, uh, Rachel College is going to do the the presentation here. She is. I think we have a few students, don't we? Or We do. We have folks on Zoom. Um, I'm Rachel College. I'm Educational Leadership Specialist here at USBE. And I'm here to introduce our State Director of Utah Schools to Watch. Schools to Watch is part of our support of middle level education here in Utah, and we have um, Lori Gardner is going to come up and introduce our most recently um, selected school. Okay. Good morning, I'm Lori Gardner, and I'm pleased to be with you this morning. I think this is about the 14th time uh, that I have done so to recognize an outstanding middle-level school in the state of Utah. Schools to Watch is part of a national organization. The schools that you see listed on the slide are all nationally recognized schools. They're not only um, great schools academically for students, but they are. They meet the developmental and social needs of young adolescents. They create opportunities for students to have uh, success and excel in, in a wide variety of areas. They do a great job involving their communities. And um, they are schools where uh, there's a collaborative leadership. Teachers and faculty members share in the ownership and development of what happens. And that's why you see so many of our schools. We have two of them this coming year that will be recognized for the fifth time. They have to redesignate every three years and for a school to have done this it means that they have been on the trajectory of improvement for well over 20 years and these two schools have had a combined change in principalship 10 times so that just shows you that when others are involved in leadership the uh, school improvement continues we have some emeritus schools there We've got schools uh, that span the state from Alice C. Harris Intermediate in Tremont to uh, Albert R. Lyman School, Middle School in Blanding. We've got Milford High School that even though they are a high school, they have about 38 seventh and eighth graders. And when they started adopting some of the research and the principles behind Schools to Watch, they found that it was not only 
of benefit to those young adolescents. It improved the culture and the work that they were doing for all of the students in the school. So I'm pleased to introduce you to Sandy Farrell, the principal of our latest school, Sunrise Intermediate, uh, Sunrise Ridge Intermediate in Washington School District. You're muted. Principal, you're still muted. We're not getting you. Still not there. Not yet. So you're not, it's gotta be on our end. Just hang in there for just one second. Principal Farrell, we're looking at Not showing me So, Jerry, if you're listening to this, we're having some problems. Chair Huntsman, can you hear me? This is Vice Chair Belknap. Yeah, well, I can hear you. We just can't. So I'm wondering if it's on um, Principal Farrell's and rather than the system itself. Thanks for that. We can be patient here a minute. I'm always amazed at the IT heroes that are in every building <laughs> when you're trying to get a rescue. We'll, we'll see if we get a rescue here. What he can do here. You have, you have Sandy's number. Yeah. Board member Norton is going to call Principal Farrell on her phone. If you got Principal Farrell, if you can hear this, is your phone available? So our, our famous guy with the NASA shirt on, we, we're wondering who you are, but we'll figure that out because we can't hear you. Yes. Probably finding her phone. I'll bet if we ask a student if they have their phone. Chair Huntsman. Yes. This is Vice Chair Belknap. Um, actually, Sandy called me, and so that's why she didn't answer for Kristen. Um, they are going to log out and log back in and see if that helps. If it doesn't, then Kristen could call her and put her on her microphone. Okay. Well, that will be our plan B. So give her, we'll give them a minute here. And I, I, Wondering, um, time-wise, and managing, well, our public comment doesn't start till 10, so 
so people won't be on track. Just a try. We're not hearing you. Okay. Member Norton's going to call your cell phone. Hey, friend. Here we go. Okay. I'll put you on the microphone. This probably isn't. Turn off. It, now it's no. going yeah. feeding feedback to her computer. Not better. It is. Okay. So I'm Sandy Farrell. I'm the principal at Sunrise Ridge. And I'm joined by Tristan Anderson and Samantha Spencer and Kinsley Cave, um, Angie Ott, who is our learning coach, and Cadence Lyman and Traxton Taylor. So I've got some students here. Um, and I know you can't see them. He's working to see if he can get the, vi the video. Oh, the video's still working. Okay. So I'm, I apologize for that. I... I thought we were all set and everything was working, but we've got apparently some problem. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about our school and share a little bit with you about it. Um, my dad, who was a superintendent at Uinta School District, said that every good presentation should have a horse in it. So I'm going to just begin by telling you one of the things that he did when he got a new horse is he spent hours and hours in a round corral um, doing groundwork with that horse before he ever got on it. And he believed that that groundwork was essential for having a horse that was enjoyable to ride. And that's kind of what I believe about middle schools or our intermediate school is we really um, lay, a groundwork, lay groundwork or a foundation for these students as they move through the education system. So even though I spent a good portion of my time at the high school level, I really am happy to be at the intermediate level working with these sixth and seventh grade students with important skills. Um, we have high hopes for this school year. That's our theme for the year. I don't know if you can see the presentation that I put together, but I'm going to just kind of work through it. Um, these are challenging times for sure. And one of the things we know is that a strong system can withstand challenging times. And that's one of the things I'm really um, grateful for at this school is our teachers, our custodians, our lunch people, our paraprofessionals, students and parents, because we have worked together through these challenging times and I feel like have um, are surviving um, some of the stresses that are being placed on the system. We have three core principles at our school that we really focus on, and we call those the ABCs of Sunrise Ridge, and that is the three words, achieve, belong, contribute. And we believe that those are essential for our students. We want them to achieve in their learning. We want them to feel like they belong, and we want them to gain some skills that will help them contribute to um, their community and the world. Then in addition to that, we have um, looked at 
the Schools to Watch framework, and one of the first things in Schools to Watch is academic excellence. And I'm going to let um, our, our learning coach talk a little bit about academic excellence at Sunrise Ridge. So I'll kind of aim the camera up in her direction. All right, thank you. I hope that you can still hear us. Um, so academic excellence at Sunrise Ridge really goes back to our PLC model. And that model is a system where each team works together to answer four questions. And we start all of our meetings with these four questions. And really it just comes down to what do we want our kids to know? How are we going to know if they've learned it? What are we going to do if they don't learn it? And what are we going to do if they already have learned it? And if we guide each of our meetings with those four principles, our teams can really work together to identify what's most important academically. And I feel like our teams at Sunrise have been really successful um, working together as teams to find what's best for students. Okay. Thank you. Um, another thing that's a, a, a cornerstone of Schools to Watch is developmental responsiveness. And I wanted the students to talk about this. And I just asked them to each make a comment about something that is um, that they value here at the school. So I'm going to let them just come up and um, take just a minute. We'll start with um, Tristan, if Tristan will just come over here, and if you guys want to be ready to come up, just to come sit in this chair and talk to these people. Yeah. Hi. Um, something that I love about the school is that the fact that we get to do intramurals and that we get to do sports after lunch. So after lunch, we still have like 10 minutes left, and we get to do sports. Like right now, we are doing volleyball, where everyone gets to make a team that like of their friends and we do volleyball and you keep going till the finals and then the school gets to come in and watch you guys play volleyball and it's not just volleyball we have volleyball kickball basketball soccer football we, it's really fun and i'm really glad that we get to do that after lunch and have fun playing with their friends and doing our sports that we love okay thank you this is samantha Hi. One of my favorite things about this school is the activities committee because we get to plan activities to help the kids want to come to school and enjoy school. And it's really fun because we have like the thunder stick. And what it is is you it's you make clues and then you try to find the thunder stick. And then the person who finds it gets like a prize and their picture taken. And yeah. Thank you. This is Kinsley Cave. Hi. So one thing that I really like about our school is that the teachers, like when you make a mistake, they don't act like it's a bad thing. They help you and they understand that it was hard and help you improve. Okay, thanks, yeah. Kinsley. This is Cadence Lyman. Hi, so one of my favorite things about the school is the environment, like the teachers and the students and like what we get to do, like we get to do the intramurals and we have fun activities to do during school and we have like spirit week and the environment is really good, like the teachers are very nice, they understand if you make a mistake and it's just overall feels like I want to come to school, it's not like I don't want to come to school and like I'm, when I wake up in the morning I'm excited to come to school and see my friends and learn. Thank you. And Traxton. Hi, um, so the favorite thing about the part of my school about the school is when the bell rings, we can all go to our next classes, and the teachers are always like out of the classroom, classrooms, and smiling, like being happy, and you get the chances to like meet with your friends and talk for a moment. 
that's just my favorite part about school. Okay, thank you. So it's always fun to hear what, what matters to kids, and I appreciate them um, being willing to come talk to you. Um, there's some other things that I listed on that slideshow, but some of those are things we didn't do last year that we plan to put in um, next year. Another cornerstone of schools to watch is um, social equity, and that's paying attention to the needs of individual learners. We're not a highly diverse school, but we do have a wellness room called the Beach House. We have a positive behavior intervention system. And one thing we've done in the past is done home visits to some of our students that we feel like needed to um, feel like they belonged. Probably one of the um, uh, most important programs at our school is Thunderbolt Time. Uh, Thunderbolt time is time set aside each day, um, three days a week, for students to get extra time and support if they need it. And then we do extensions for students who don't need an intervention. If you'll go to the next slide, um, that kind of shows a little bit about Thunderbolt time. It's an organizational structure that's a big part of our school. Um, some of the extensions that we offer kids during Thunderbolt time is they can learn to play a, a ukulele, um, we do musical theater, we have an archery class. So those kids are getting that for the first time this year because these are all sixth graders last year during COVID and this year they'll get an opportunity to do those. So those are that's an important part of our, our school and something that really helps us build relationships with kids, meet the needs of students who need extra time and support, and then provide some extensions. I wanted to just mention that Sunrise Ridge Intermediate School um, has been recognized as a national model PLC school. We're a STEM school through the STEM Action Center at the Silver Level. And we also have a digital teaching and learning grant that we're doing with the district. So. In addition to that groundwork and those foundations that we try to do, we also try to be progressive and pay attention to the needs of kids as um, the times change and keep up, keeping up with the digital changes. Although that we didn't do a very good job of modeling that today with this presentation, but anyway, we'll learn from it. Um, the last thing I just um, wanted to mention to you is we sure appreciate the work of the Utah State School Board and the Utah Office of Education. As we have pursued some of these things that we've done in our school, we have referred to the portrait of a graduate, which was developed by the Utah State Office of Education. And we really appreciated that document and it shapes many of the things we're doing. So it, it truly is kind of a team effort all the way from Salt Lake City at the very top, um, down to the individual schools where we're trying to work together to do um, what's best for students and, and help them grow and learn, and we appreciate that. Um, if this ever happens again, I'll come up in person so that we can uh, bypass the technology issues. The students actually told me yesterday they would have liked to road trip with me, so I, uh, I maybe should have done that. And, Although they haven't seen me drive, maybe after they saw me drive, because I'm pretty slow, they might have changed their mind. But thank you so much. I thank Lori Gardner for her support and um, your support as well. And we appreciate this recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Farrell. What, we, let's just give, I, we're not in a place to, or in a position to give questions and answers. So let's just, we appreciate the presentation and let's just end with maybe a, a round of applause. Maybe you can hear it. Thank you. Awesome work and an awesome example. So, schools to watch. We'll we'll keep our eye on it. Uh, no pun intended. So, thank you and thank you, students.